Luke chapter 1. Let's stand in honor of God's word as we read this morning. This is Mary's song. Luke 1, 46 through 56. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. May God bless his word. You may be seated. Thank you. There's a song in my heart. Maybe you should say today, is there a song in your heart? Why do you sing? Why do you enjoy music? If I ask many people that, I'm sure there will be the same number of answers. I just want to share a few in my heart today. It's part of my life. I started playing the piano for a few years when I was in the fourth grade, but really, I share with people that the fourth grade, just one year of piano, uh, was a, I think it settled in my mind the beauty of music, just to learn the basic notes. That's the basic thing. And I think everybody would, would be blessed by that, just hearing the sounds uh, on the piano. Harmony and melody of sounds is a beautiful thing, just the blending. Just like today, as you will come, pray for that you can come and hear the musical, the Brother Dave leads and you have different parts, the four parts, basically. And uh, the harmony, melody, blending together, making beautiful, beautiful music. And then the third thing for me personally is to honor the Lord. I'm glad that I can sing sometimes, and it's to honor the Lord. And I try to sing hymns or other songs to honor our Lord. But we know that in the recent weeks, there's been sadness has enveloped many people. Uh, think of the fires in the Great Smoky Mountains. And just yesterday I learned about the teens playing with matches. Uh, how would you like to be their parents? The death and destruction. Many people sad. Uh, the murder of the three-year-old by their stepfather. They brought him back to Carter County this week, you know, some months ago he did this. But we find in the Bible one named Mary who was experiencing great sadness and confusion. But she can sing for joy. Pregnant and not married. You know what happened then that day? Could be stoned. Her fiancé, Joseph, said, hey, I've got to put her away privately. I, you know there in Matthew 1, he said... I'll get rid of it. Let's, let's just get out of this. She was poor. No, she was from a peasant family. She didn't have any royal authorities in her life or come from a royal family. No power. So would you, would you say today that she was uh, well off or very poor? Would you say that she was feeling great happiness or joy? 
But the Bible says, we did last week in Luke chapter 1, we found out that she humbled herself. She said, I'm a handmaid. I'm just like a lowly servant, a humble servant of the Lord. And she submitted to his will. Are you doing that today? If there's a song in your heart today, you're going to have to do that. Humble yourself and submit to his will. We pick up the message here that in verses 39 through 45 that we did not read, she had gone to be with her cousin Elizabeth, who was older, and she was pregnant with John the Baptist. They said she was always, we'd be barren. But God intervened and did a marvelous miracle in her life. And then we find here, in, starting in verse 46, God put a beautiful song in Mary's heart. Let's say today, first of all, we can have a song in our heart because God is the true joy giver. Maybe you want to write that down in your Bible, joy giver. Verses 46 and 47. Many people are searching for happiness today. You've got to get something in your mind that's different. Happy deals with circumstances and things around us. Joy deals with a higher level, a deeper level. I think a more spiritual level when you think of the joy of the Lord. See, I can have a certain possession, a large house, a big boat. I, I can have things, but I not have joy. I can be happy. Of the circumstance, a position. I can have a certain job. And some climb to the heights of the highest jobs. And that's great. But it doesn't mean they have the true joy of the Lord, does it? They can have happiness? Sure. But dear Mary begins with her hymn, this song of praise. She says what? In verse 46, my soul, say it with me, church, would you? My soul doth magnify the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. She's enlarging the Lord. She is expanding him, just like you would do with a magnifying glass. Enlarge him. We, we get this from the Latin word. The word magnify comes magnificat. It's a great desire for her to magnify the grace, greatness and wonder of God. She wasn't boasting of herself. Just boasting of the Lord. Verse 47, my spirit does what? Rejoice. Rejoices in my God, my Savior. Now think of something for a moment. You want real joy today? You've got to know the Savior. God's given her a joy because she knows him personally. She calls him God, my what? Savior. Say Savior. Savior. She realized she was a sinner. Did you know Mary was a sinner? She was a human, wasn't she? She had the same Adamic, the Adam's nature, Adam and Eve's nature within her. She inherited a sin nature, just like you and me. Even though chosen to be the mother of Jesus, she was a human. Under the curse of Adam's sin, separated from God. She needed to trust the Lord for her eternal salvation. Do you know the Lord personally today? You can say, my soul rejoices in God, my Savior, if you know him personally through his son, Jesus. That's why Jesus came. He's Christ, the Lord, a Savior is born. Do you know him? This word rejoice, uh, you can go back and it finds it means to jump up and down for joy. It's like a little children or grandchildren. Uh, when they come and they, they see something or you hand them something, what happens? The eyes just open up. They, they jump up and down. I mean, they're so excited about it, aren't they? It's a blessing to them. Excitement. Mary had a song in her heart because God made himself known in a wonderful way. Now, the song of joy, as we said, didn't come because she was married. That Joseph as her husband. They were not. She could sing because, as we said, she didn't have any possessions, hardly. She was poor. She sang even when the tears were flowing in her little life, confused about what was taking place. She didn't know all that was transpiring in her young life, but she was carrying the Son of God, Savior of the world. It's a challenge for each of us today, in this day, in the season of Christmas time. Do you know the true joy giver? 
There could be a song in your heart if you're seeking the Lord. Are you trusting him? Do you know him personally? Do you love him? Have you called upon him as your very own Savior? True joy giver. Secondly, today, there can be a song in our heart because of a supreme special planner. We call the Lord our special planner. See, God not only has a special plan, he has a special part for you to play. In verses 48 through 50, it says, The Lord regarded Mary. He's mindful of her. He looked down with favor upon her. That's called the word grace, church. He poured out his grace upon her. She was to be in his plan. He chose her. She didn't choose to be the, uh, the bearer of the Savior, to be Jesus' mother. He chose her. Verse 49, he said, the Lord is mighty. He has done great things. Holy is his name. I wonder today if Mary could have sung, to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world. That he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement. That is, a blood sacrifice. Shed his blood for us. Do, do you see? Could you sing that today? Could she have sung that? Surely she could have. Verses in chapter 1, 26 through 30. We look there, back there and he's talking about all about grace of God. His amazing grace in picking her. In his special plan, he chose her. She was highly favored, the Bible says, to bring the Savior into the world. It's great to be a part of God's plan of redemption, isn't it? He's coming to save us, deliver us. With the many struggles and pain that she faced, she could look beyond and sing of his mighty power and holiness and mercy. What about us today as believers? God is at work in your life if you belong to Jesus. Do you know the Christ of Christmas? If you do, then he has a special part for you to play because he's a special planner. He's the greatest planner. We're to bear the gospel in good news and word and deed. Doesn't matter who you are, what you have, that's not the point. Do you belong to him? Do you trust him? Are you walking with him? There's a man had a sign on the mirror in his room. And every morning he awakened, and here's what it said. What have you got going today, God? I'd like to be a part of it. Thank you for loving me. I wonder if every day this coming week, before Christmas, you could say, Lord, thank you for being the great special planner of this world. What part do you want me to play? Have you thought about that? Young person? You're, you're not too, you're not too uh, young. Young adult, middle adult, senior, senior, you're not too old. You can be a part of his plan. You are a part of his plan if you know him. You see, that statement emphasizes a good message for us. We want to be in God's special plan, don't you? You want to fit in with him. Why, why do we always run ahead of God? Lord, I know just as much as you. I want to do my thing. I want to go my way. Is that what we say? Sure we do. We fail. Then we would say, God, I want to do this and I want you to bless it. We well, ain't that kind of backwards. It's like on your daily journey of life, those still in school. So, Lord, Lord, give me an A in math tomorrow on my test. Well, what are you doing about it? He's got a plan for you. It's called study. Do you understand? It would be to study. You, you go to work tomorrow and say, Lord, I, I don't want to work and I don't care about working with these people around me. God said, that's not the plan. You've chosen to be a part of that place at this time. What do you want me to do in your life to help them? Have you ever thought of that? 
What's my part to play, Lord? In the life of the church. God, give me a perfect church. Well, once you step in it, it'll be imperfect. You got that? And I step in it, it's imperfect. That, that's the wrong statement. That's not, that's not God's plan. One day we'll be perfect in his presence. But we live in an imperfect world with a perfect Savior. We're to trust him. We come with a humble heart to the Lord. He made me, loved me. You sent your son to save me. You called me to be your servant. I want to be a part of your special, wonderful plan. You see, that's a different picture. You think of Mary in everyday life as a young lady. God showed up through the angel Gabriel. That was the earlier part, Luke chapter 1. Chosen to be a part of God's amazing plan of salvation to bring forth the Son of God. She didn't make up the plan. She heard. She accepted what God's messenger, the angel Gabriel, came to her about. She believed it. Surrendered her life to it. It cost her. But she could still sing that magnificent song. Examine your heart today. Are you passing time with your own plans? Or are you living life in God's plans? Thirdly, it can be a song in your heart because God is a life changer. He's the best life changer. Verses 51 through 53. Verse 51. It, it says here. He's been talking about the mercy of God poured out. In 51 he says he hath shown strength with his arm. God was working his plan of mercy to show his mighty power. It, I get the picture like God is flexing his muscles now, if you see me after church, I'll show you my muscles. That's a real joke. You ought to really laugh about that one. But Mary's song speaks about how God will be the life changer. He, he's going to turn things around, friends. He's going to turn it upside down or make it upside right, you might say. He shakes things. Look in verse 51. The Bible says he scatters the proud. See that? He brings the mighty down. In this world system, I'm saying. Many times it wants us on the throne of selfish pride. Promote yourself. Be self-sufficient. Make it to the top. Be on your own. Do what you want. You can do it. You don't need God. You don't need a Savior. Just go for it. I found this week about being tempted to be proud in money. It said, I'm reminded of the mother whale who told her the baby. It said, dear, when you get to the top and start to blow, that's when you get harpooned. That's when you're going to seek your death, be a death fall. You see, that's what the Lord is saying. You're headed for a fall if you go against my plans. I'm, I'm here to shake it up. Shake down the mighty. Make them weak. So we need to humble ourselves that he may exalt us. You come lowly in God's presence. He'll lift you up. Cast thy cares upon the Lord. He will exalt you. Humble yourself. Weak, becoming strong. Just think, I think about the Apostle Paul. Shipwreck, run out of town, beaten, stoned, put in prison. But he said, through it all, my grace is sufficient, he heard the Lord saying. In my weakness, God's going to show himself strong. Isn't that a great thing? Verse 53, he says he fills the hungry with good things, the rich he hath sent empty away. I think of the Lord Jesus in Matthew 5 of the Sermon on the Mount. He said, those who hunger and thirst for themselves shall be filled. Is that what the Bible says? They hunger and thirst for righteousness, God's righteousness. Not your own, not your self-made ways, 
Not your self plans. Mary rejoices because she knows the bread of life and the living water. And for us, too, that's the only way you can be satisfied is come to Jesus, find true satisfaction. It's called a spiritual heart of humility and hungering and thirsting for God. I want to be used by you, Lord. See, that's God's amazing plan through his son. He came to bring the kingdom of God into the kingdom of this world. To give his righteousness into our sinfulness. To send his salvation, his son, the savior, into our lostness. He lets us know that he's here to turn the world upside down, to shake us up. Mary could sing, Lord, you really are the best life changer. Weak, dethroning, mighty, humble, scattering, proud, nobodies being lifted up, hungry being filled, the rich becoming poor. See, the grace of God is working, working opposite our thoughts and our ways. Our plans are being turned over. Do you believe that? He is a life changer. I pray he'll change your life today. And fourthly, it can be a song in our heart this Christmas because God is the greatest promise keeper. The greatest promise keeper. How long has God been faithful? He's eternal, forever. Isn't that right? Now right here he speaks about keeping the promises to Israel in verses 54 and 55. Looking back in Luke 31, 31, Mary, what did, what did the Lord promise to her? In verse 30, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Verse 31, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. You call his name Jesus. Why did Gabriel already sent by the Lord back in Matthew 1 say? You shall call his name Jesus shall save his people from their sins. It's already been promised. And the baby was coming. Mary proclaims that God's going to remember here in these scriptures 54 and 55, something very, very special. Look at verse 55. Spoke to our forefathers, to Abraham. Where is she going? She going back to the beginning of Israel. The people of Israel. Genesis 12, I'll make of thee a great nation. I'll bless thee. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 17, 19, God told Sarah, she was 90 years old. He said, you're going to have a son, call his name Isaac. She laughed about it. Isaac came, didn't he? Seed of faith. Jacob, Isaac had Jacob and Esau. Jacob, the lineage of faith. And you got David on down. The years later, many generations. And then who's the later generation? About 14 generations after David. Son of David, Jesus, born in Bethlehem's manger. You see the picture? God is faithful. He's saying, remember. Don't you remember that? The promises. God keeps his promises. Back in Psalm 98, 3, he hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. Back in Egypt, God sent a deliverer, Moses. If they would disobey, God would send them into captivity. God would give a deliverer. He's always faithful. He kept his promise. Assyria, Babylonia, God would send a deliverer. And then he sent the Messiah, God's anointed one, the Savior. God was ready to say yes. And he sent Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah 7, 14, the Lord shall give you a sign. Shall conceive and bear a son. This is like 740 years or 720 plus years before Jesus was born. Call his name Emmanuel, God with us. 
Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, a child is born, his government shall be upon his shoulder, shall call his name Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Who is that? It's Jesus, the Messiah. Mary was carrying Jesus in her womb to be born in the town of Bethlehem. A promise keeper. How well are you keeping promises? Do you just make promises or do you keep promises? I found the story this week about the church had a beautiful manger scene inside the church. Day after day, uh, people would come and see that during the Christmas season. Well, right after Christmas, the pastor noticed baby Jesus was missing at the front. So he heard this noise outside the door of the church. So he walked outside and there's a little boy with a red wagon. And in the red wagon was the little baby Jesus. And he walked up to the little fella. He said, hey, little fella. He said, uh, where did you get baby Jesus? He said, gone from me inside the church. He said, well, why did you do that? He said, you know, preacher, a week before Christmas, I told baby Jesus, I said, Lord, if you'll give me a little red wagon, I'll give you a ride in that wagon. And sure enough, he kept his promise. He got baby Jesus out, put him in that wagon, and we're going to ride him around. I just tell you that a lot of times in life, it can be Christmas, it can be all year, anytime. We make promises. We don't keep them. But I want you to know, there is a promise keeping God. He's true. We're weak and simple. I know that just like me, just like you. We fall short of our great God's glory. But he says, I'll bless you and keep you. I'll love you. I've loved you enough to give you my only begotten son. You don't have to perish, but have everlasting life. I give you peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, John 14, 27. I give joy. Joy to the full, John 15. Our Lord is faithful. Dear Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus, believe God was faithful and a promise keeper. She sang to magnify him. That he didn't forget his promises. He sent the proof in his blessed son Jesus. You may be saying today, I don't like to sing. That's not the point. You can read a song. You can write a song. Just a poem. That's what the great hymns are like about. We can have a song in the heart. But, but preacher, you don't understand. All around me is frustration. There's trouble, confusion, people rushing, people running, racing. Mary could have said, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I'm on the path of uncertainty. But I'll tell you this, I'm going to sing. I have a song in my heart. I'll trust you to give me joy. I'll be a part of your special plan. I know that you're a life changer. You'll change those around me. You've changed my life. And I know that you're faithful to keep your promises. Christmas has a magnificent song for you, friends. He stepped out of the glories of heaven and God became a man. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, John 1 and 14. You believe that? God became man in the person of that virgin-born son, the babe of Bethlehem. Look what he endured. Look what he went through. Uncertainty, trial, struggles, mockery, suffering. He came into this broken world of ours and he went to the cross. And there he paid the price for our sin debt. The Bible says those who repent, Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Turn, change your mind, change the direction of your life. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing. Maybe now. Put your trust in him. 
He will make you righteous with the Holy God. He'll put you in that right relationship. Reconcile. You're separated. We're separated. But he puts us back together. He wants you to have a saving relationship, a living relationship with him. He will give us everlasting life. Do you know that? That's the first invitation today. The Holy Spirit calls you to come to the Savior. He's the only way. You never know the Savior. Never know the true joy. Never know His plan for your life till you know Him personally. Why don't you give your life to Jesus today if you need to do that? Then you could come into His church. Be a church member. Be a part of His church. Maybe you've trusted Christ. They've already been baptized. But you want to be a part of of the church family. Maybe you need to just personally examine your heart today. Say, Lord, I need a personal examination. Would you help me? What's inside of me that needs to be changed? I want you to do it for me at this Christmas season. Well, let's stand together. They will come. God is speaking to your heart.